enjoy all sorts of medium and this particular body of work is a series of monoprints uh, hand embellished and I've included some soil uh, some of them are soil from Morocco and some of them are soil from Africa and uh, I always collect soil that's interesting to identify just to get a feeling of the place that you know and the images that I'm using uh, about the people that I have seen and photographed and have asked their permission to use them, of course. Well, okay, this is interesting then. So the people in these images, did you photograph them or do they sit for you? No, I photograph them. Wonderful. In my travels, you know, I take photographs. I'm very interested in figurative work and body language and racial identity that brings people together or separates them by, you know, sort of genetic, geographic, historical coincidence. You know, that's sort of what makes people attract and detract from one another. I'm always interested in that, coming from the background that I come from. Which is? I was born in South Africa. My parents are from Eastern Europe. So uh, I have a long line of information about discrimination. Now the paper, you said came from what country? Well, I collect papers, I make my own papers as well because I feel that the paper is not just um, something you stick your image onto, but it's part of the medium. So I make a lot of my own paper, but when I go to countries that uh, do the same thing and have a, I have an interest, so some of these are paper from Vietnam, it's called dough paper. And they usually use this paper for um, the calligraphy, uh, writing letters and writing posters and things. Uh, on my table over there, I have paper from South Africa, and that's made from zebra dung. Oh, you can believe it! Oh, I cannot. Yeah, and this. And I love zebras. Oh. <laughs> well, it's all very sterile, of course, because it's been boiled and dried out and everything else. But since they are herbivores, so the grass has the lovely fibre. Oh, very and good point. This is soil from South Africa. These were, you know, vessels that this little old lady. I should actually get her picture and put it here. Oh, she made yes. These these vessels you can't see because I've done, but they stand about this high. Wow. Three or four foot high. She makes them without a wheel. She does it and they are so gorgeous. And they're made from the natural clay. Except the original concept was because I love, um, I love being at the beach. I find it calming. So that's the theme. And I took pictures all over the world, including here. And then I mix them up together. So they aren't any one particular place. It's a conglomeration. Wow. And so I make a collage. And then I hire models. And I um, paint the models on top of the collage. And then I collage back in over the models again. Oh, that's amazing. And I started amazing. building it. And I just had this vision of a 10 by 10 foot painting made out of smaller paintings. So each one's two feet square, and the whole piece is 10 feet by 10 feet. And then I put in the color, the pops of color. Right. Because um, if I put a high gloss on those. First okay. of all, they're pops of color from the palette, and it's also a restful place to go. And it's, and it's actually reflective. I like it's the fact that it reflects. It's reflective so that when you come in and you're looking at details, and then you look up, you'll be in the picture. Right. Thanks. Right, and then just to get that square, solid color, I mean, so that's, auto, that, that's an automotive um, glaze that's on it. Wow. On what? On the canvas? Yes. Or, wow. So the canvas, I painted the canvas and then they put an automotive glaze on it. Brilliant. Yeah. <laughs> So 
So to me, this is really an incredible piece for these homes with the vaulted ceilings and these huge walls. Do you, have you put a price on this? And then also, if you sold one of these, could you uh, do it again and maybe rearrange it for someone's liking? Or what would be yes. your I Oh. Yeah, I mean, I'm flexible. Okay. So I can always add in other pieces. Right, and if someone didn't want the orange to pop out or the gold, they might pick then a different color. something else. Okay. To go there. Right. Well, there are dandelions, or even the smaller ones, more like weeds, that you wouldn't even look at. And I try to take things, found objects from nature uh, and trash, and turn them into something else. So I try to transform them. No, I, I photograph in natural light uh, on black granite, and I use a little bit of water. And there's some images that are with shells, and some with the dandelions and the weeds. And I so those drops. That's not like a gem. It's actually a water drop. It's a water drop of water. <gasps> oh, aren't you something? So then, what is the centerpiece? That I thought it was a bug. It's actually a water drop. <laughs> Yeah. All of them inside here? Yes. Drops of water, beads of water. And then the images that you see in the beads of water actually are naturally occurring. I don't use Photoshop. I don't, I really don't manipulate my photos. Uh, based on a photograph and I go over many many layers okay and um, so it, it starts pretty dark and then it gets lighter and lighter and sometimes I have to go back and make it a little darker so is it actually graphite or ink underneath or it's, it's the starting of your oil paints oh. um, that's the first series I did but now I'm also exploring acrylic this one is an acrylic piece I tend to always go for the blue grays so oh. dream. and dreamy it has that dream dreamy effect Started off with the, with the faces. Oh, you did. So the, we start, I started with the mask first, and then uh, I sort of just uh, lucked out with the hair, and it would look like you know locks, dread locks. So. Yes, exactly. So I'm real curious. Were they intended to be plant holders? Because you call them masks. They, they were always they were always going to be planters. Oh, this is wonderful. Yeah. So I thought I could experiment with different types of hair. Uh, with basically different types of plants and um, this was probably the most fun and the most the most rewarding um, oh it's it's perfect in the bloom now so uh, yeah. this is one of my oh. favorite pieces this, this piece is not for sale but it hangs in my on my patio Like okay. sculptures, almost. Yeah. Well, it's some of this. Some of it is sculpture. Some of it is flat. Um, it's all my photography. I have about five thousand images on my computer. Um, I'm very interested in architecture because I like the repetition and the movement of architecture. So sometimes you can go up close and you can recognize things, and then when you step back it sort of becomes the object. So it's, someone was saying earlier, it's almost like looking at a cloud and your brain makes sense of it oh, and turns it into something else. That's really interesting. Yeah. Well, I'm working on a series right now um, based on a show I'm gonna be in next year called The Uncommon Apron. And so I just did a piece which I sold at the uh, other art fair this past weekend with Saatchi. And it was uh, sort of based on the Wonder Woman um, warrior armor kind of thing. And it was fun. And so now I'm kind of working on a tool belt. I don't know if it's going to be a tool belt when it's done. It may turn into something else. I never know. Oh, this you is know? so fun. So it, it really is. It's a great material. I've really found my place. 
we take photographs and then um, I create a composite sheet and a repeat pattern because my background's in textile. Oh, so if you look closely, you can see yes. it kind of looks like fabric. Exactly. Um, but it's not. I print on this plastic and then I hand stitch it. I cut it up and hand yeah. stitch it. Delicate look to it, but I must tell you, it's very lightweight and it's very sturdy. And you're welcome to touch anything here. I encourage people to touch. Wow.